My friends, today's story begins with a young explorer, a brave young boy named Satoru, who had just moved into a new home and into a new world that was just right for the exploring. A world that offered fascinating wonders with its rocky formations and calming seashore sounds that was just a few blocks away from Satoru's home. Whereas we adults are more focused on a direct path, it is amazing how a child is more the spontaneous observer of nature, seeking for that taste of adventure, the thrill of a mystery, and even the wonderful experience of horror when facing the unknown like a small cave, a black mouth at the bottom of a rocky cliff, an abyss that had a strange fixation with Satoru's curiosity, luring the vulnerable child into a darkened world, and brought before a bizarre discovery, a tide pool, a red tide pool. And as Satoru gazed upon his strange finding, trying to make sense of this bizarre discovery, that was when it had appeared. At first the boy assumed that he was being greeted by a rotting carcass of a dead animal. And when its body had made itself known to the open world, Satoru would find his taste for exploring, rewarding him with an unexpected shock. Why, it was a body. A decomposing mockery of a woman who was riddled from head to toe with deep cuts. And as our curious boy had to take a closer look upon this morbid and fascinating discovery. That was when his right leg would be grabbed by a cold and slimy hand. Somehow, there was still life within this woman, and even though her body and composure had shown that she was going through a great deal of pain, there was a disturbing sense of content when she had greeted her new friend with a soft and warming voice. A sweet and curious little boy who has come to play with her. Her name was Tomie and she wanted to play with her new friend. And even though in the back of Satoru's mind that there was something wrong about all this, an evil within this woman, like he was a fly that was being lured by the sweet callings of a spider, little Satoru had to know what had happened to this woman if all this blood was hers. She said that a very bad man had done some very bad things to her, and threw her into this tide pool. She was also very insistent on making sure that Satoru would keep his discovery a secret, especially from mommy and daddy. And then every day, little Satoru would come and visit her to play with his new friend. And as the strange woman reached out to greet her new friend with the intent of easing Satoru's reluctance with a kiss, that, my friends, was the temptations that would tease and ensnare the love of a young boy. The following days, little Satoru would spend a great deal of his time with his new friend Tomie. Oh, how the young child had come to adore Tomie, doing everything he could to make her smile, to see Tomie make a full recovery from her injuries, spending such quality time as she would share her sad stories of all those who were mean to her, who'd done some terrible things to her. Little Satoru had even found himself growing an unexpected love for Tomie, trying to please his new friend with a pretty dress. And you know what? Tomie was incredibly thankful for the child's act of kindness. That if it wasn't for little Satoru, she would have never gotten the strength to pull herself out of that tide pool. And to thank the small boy for his devotion and love, Tomie had given the exhausted child another kiss. And even though Tomie immediately knew that Satoru had stolen the dress from his mother, seeing how it was not her style of fashion, outdated, she didn't really mind. Kind of made her feel like she was Satoru's mother. It was mostly because of Satoru that his family had decided to buy a house near the ocean. Nothing better than some fresh air for a growing boy. Something that would give him character, make him strong on the inside. Except, since the day that Satoru had came home from exploring the beach, drenched with water after claiming that he had accidentally fallen into a tide pool, Satoru's behavior was different. Every day the child was in a state of fatigue and tiredness. His nights were uneasy. 
because of how night terrors would deprive the boy from sleep, a lack of enthusiasm, growing more distant from his parents by the day, even becoming frail because of a lack of appetite. Not only had Satoru's parents immediately caught on to the strange behavior and its connection with his ventures to the beach, they assumed that the poor boy was being bullied because of how they noticed that Satoru had begun taking food from the fridge without asking, that he had also taken his mother's dress. But Satoru's strange behavior was far more deeper, something that was now standing on the edge of a sinister evil. That the frail boy was not only in a state of desperation, but willing to do anything and everything he could to please his new friend. How Satoru had come to love her. The kind of love that would even have Satoru please Tomie by stealing an expensive dress. That no matter what, Tomie deserves the best. Mommy deserves the best. Oh, how Tomie loved her dress. So beautiful, so expensive. The perfect fashion. The kind of gift that would give a girl like Tomie a warming smile. And the sudden urge to run around the beach with her new dress while playing with her sweet friend in a friendly game of tag. Even though this may look like an act of motherly love, believe me, my friends, when I say that this was far more than a child's display of unconditional love. Oh yes, it was definitely the feelings of love that had driven Sotoru into a pathetic and frail version of his former self. Except, somewhere in the mind of this child, he knew that this was not the same love he would have for a mother. It was like an unknown force that was luring him into the clutches of this woman, Tomie. This woman. Something was not right about her. Something that was inhuman, malicious, vile, evil in its purest form. And Satoru's childish mind knew that this woman had no love for him, nor anybody else. That she never cared for the emotional feeling. And Satoru had not only found himself in a state of helplessness because of this corrupted love for Tomie that had infected his mind, the child knew that he was nothing more but prey for this vile predator, that he was now her plaything, and that there was nothing that Satoru could do about it. Kind of like how a cheetah likes to play mother to a baby impala before eating the poor animal. When Satoru's mother had decided to give in to her curiosity by investigating her son's strange activities on the beach, she had not expected to find herself walking onto a scene where a strange woman would be kissing her son. Instantly the mother knew that this was something more than a horrid act. Maybe it was because of her motherly instincts, but somehow she knew that this vile woman had put her son in a trance, a spell of some sort. And as the mother pulled Satoru away from the clutches of this witch, confronting her had came with an unexpected shock when she had not only introduced herself as Tomie, but had arrogantly claimed that little Satoru was his mother. Of course, you could clearly see the obvious reluctance on the face of Satoru's mom. But it was true. That's what little Satoru had been calling her this whole time. He practically begged Tomie to be his mother. And seeing how there's two mothers, two mothers that were too many for such a sweet boy, makes you wonder which mother does little Satoru love the most. And as our child had found himself at a crossroads, that was when Satoru's mother would deprive her son from answering such a question before vowing that little Satoru will never go anywhere near the ocean or this vile woman again. After that day on the beach, life for Satoru and his parents had became more like a living nightmare. The night terrors had not only gotten more severe, but would haunt Satoru every night, giving the boy and his parents the endless nights of exhausting torment. They couldn't understand what was happening to their son. 
He wasn't eating, he wasn't sleeping, his behavior had grown more erratic by the day, and he had the constant urge to go back to the beach, back to that woman. Then one day, Sotoru's condition had found itself stepping into a much darker chapter when his mother had caught him trying to sneak out of the house. Not only was the boy within a deep trance, but was determined to pay his mommy a special visit while gripping a kitchen knife. Trying to talk sense into Sotaru was hopeless. Just by looking into the boy's empty eyes and hearing the rambling nonsense of being a pillar of the community, you could easily tell that this young child was already lost, consumed by a malicious evil. Left with no other options than to have the child detained within his room, just long enough for Satoru's mother to reevaluate this horrible situation and find a way to seek help for her son. By the time the father had came home, astonished by the fact that Satoru was confined into his room, thinking of this as a bit overboard, Satoru's father had not anticipated the grisly scene when entering his son's room. With a pair of scissors, little Sotoru had literally destroyed his entire room, where every piece of furniture, the carpet, the window shade, even the walls was cut and torn, and looking into the cold and empty eyes of their child, Sotoru's parents were frozen by an overwhelming sense of dreadful fear that escalated to a new level of terror. Behind the eyes of this child was murderous intent in its purest form, and a dominating compulsion for his mommy. Instantly, seizing the opportunity to make his escape, that was when Sotoru would finally be free from the confinements of his parents and just moments away from being reunited with his mother, his true mother. When Sotoru had finally made his return to the tide pool, blinded with the intent of playing with his true mother, Sotoru had not only found it shocking that he would find his beloved Tomie up and at full health, no scars, but within the arms of a man, a passing stranger who had instantly fallen for this strange woman on the beach, and was now embracing the sudden feeling of love with Sotoru's true mother just moments away from experiencing a blissful kiss. A kiss that was only meant for Satoru. And no matter what, nobody is going to take that away from the child. Even if it meant murdering this man, there was nothing in this world that was going to stand between Satoru and his beloved Tomie, his true mommy. Satoru didn't know who the man really was, didn't really care, nor did Tomie may have not realized that he just committed murder. However, Tomie was pretty upset that the kid had completely ruined her moment of fun. Little Sotaru, I came all this way just to play with a pair of scissors. Tomie's little murderer. Cute, but a little too young to be thinking about cutting up his beloved mommy. Maybe in about 10 years and Sotaru can have his fun. But what was now starting to irritate Tomie was how the kid kept calling her mother. Such an insult. It's not like she's that old. And besides, why would she even care for such a pathetic brat? Nothing but some annoying twerp that Tomie had already grown tired of. So maybe Tomie may have lost her chance of having some fun, but then again, watching the little murderer break down into some emotional wreck before walking home in shame and tears. It was a very rewarding experience for Tomie. Later that day, that was when a man's body would be found on the beach. A murder victim with no leads and no idea as to who would commit such a horrendous crime. Nobody except for a troubled family. Little Sotaru is not only a lost cause but a shameful secret that had sent his family into a world of despair because the young child is now a murderer. And that's not even the worst of it. Since Sotaru had returned home, drenched in blood and gripping a pair of scissors, Sotaru had immediately thrown himself into a frenzied madness that had forced his loving parents into taking desperate measures by having their son tied up. Constantly, the child would frantically scream for his mother nonstop. 
and it was when Satoru's desperate cries would be responded by the sounds of a sweet and mesmerizing voice filling the midnight sky just outside the residence of this troubled family. That was when the parents had begun to experience a new level of fear. There she was, the strange and yet beautiful woman who had finally answered to them unbearable cries. Of course, not only was the little Sotaru excited to be blessed with his mother's sweet, soothing voice, and that Sotaru's true mother was just seconds away from calling the authorities, but it seems like Tomie may have caught the attention of another male within this family. For some reason, just by looking into her eyes, there was this sudden urge within the father, an inner compulsion to to resolve the situation without the need of the authorities, didn't want to risk exposing the horrible thing that Sotaru had done. That it's probably best that the father were to go outside and confront this woman. He is the father of this family, and it should be up to him to bring this madness to an end. <laughs> a true tale of misfortune, my friends. That night was when the father had left his family, and that was the last time he was ever seen. As for the young boy, well, by the time that Sotaru had become of age, he was already a multiple felon. In time, Sotaru was found guilty and was executed by lethal injection. 